The iPad Pro 2020 now has two versions of an official Apple keyboard. It's got the standard Folio keyboard and the much more expensive Magic Keyboard. Now, if you saw my video yesterday on the unboxing of the Magic Keyboard, you saw that I actually do like this. The typing experience is okay. The trackpad, I think, is really where this is at. So after a day of use, let's do some comparisons between the cheaper but usable Folio and the more expensive but much more feature-rich Magic Keyboard. Which one comes out on top? Let's find out. I feel better because the iPad wasn't on it. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. This is gonna be a really quick video. There is not that much like big in-depth difference that I can get into, but there are a few highlights that I wanna cover, namely being the price. First off, now I do have an 11 inch iPad Pro 2020, so keep that in mind. This is not the 12.9 inch. A lot of you have asked me why I choose the 11 over the 12. I just think that the 11 is more in line with like an iPad. I don't necessarily want this to be a laptop, despite all the money I spend on keyboards to kind of turn it into a laptop. So this keyboard, the Folio keyboard, runs at $129, and the Magic Keyboard comes in at $300. So there is a significant price difference between the two, more than twice as expensive for the Magic Keyboard. Does it have twice the functionality? We'll, we'll find that out as we go along. I can hear you. I can hear you through the camera asking these questions. Next up, and one of these small things that I'm not sure if it's a big difference that really will drive everybody crazy, but it certainly drives me crazy, is as you can see, the iPad Folio lays flat. It just lays flat right like this. This is as far as the Magic Keyboard goes. Like, it doesn't lay flat. I don't, I don't know why this drives me crazy. Do I ever really use my iPad with a keyboard flat lay? No. But this drives me bonkers. I wish I knew why. It, I tell you, it definitely makes taking the thumbnails for these videos much harder. It's so much easier when you can be like, check it out, flat lay photography, I'm so good. Mmm, that looks good. This is hard. This is hard to do. I don't know why, but it drives me crazy. If you were expecting this to lay flat, it does not. This is as far as it goes. The big difference though, and why you would, I think the reason that you would even spend this money in the first place is the typing difference. Now the typing experience on the iPad Folio is perfectly fine, it's usable, it's nothing to write home about. My wife absolutely hates the sound of these keys. I'm surprised with me typing right now, she's not yelling. She absolutely hates it. I cannot type on this if I'm trying to type a script like before bed, or I'm trying to type one up on our kitchen upstairs, or I'm trying to answer an email, she makes me stop. She's like, wow, oh, I hate the sound of that. And I mean, listen, it is kind of an annoying, it is kind of an annoying sound, um, especially when I type a lot and I type fast. So the experience over here, um, I do find that the Magic Keyboard is just much better. It's more in line with like a MacBook or a regular keyboard. There's a lot more give, there's a lot more like responsive, and the sound's not nearly as annoying. And when you're an everyday dad, like I'm not a solo, I don't live by myself, I'm not a bachelor. When you're an everyday dad with a family, the sound annoyance of your gear is a big like. We gotta start adding that in all of the videos because if you annoy your family, they're not gonna let you use your gear around them. One of the things though that I don't like about this keyboard, and it's not necessarily against the iPad Folio because the iPad Folio doesn't have it either. If you are trying to turn your iPad in like your only computer, like a laptop, there are no function keys and that's fine. There's definitely not a touchpad, which is great. I don't like that touch bar, but I do kind of wish that maybe there was a row of function keys, especially for as much as this costs, um, that would have been a nice addition. Because there are some times where you're like trying to increase the brightness of the screen, you're working down here, you don't necessarily want to lift up and down. Which brings me into the next thing, is interacting with the screen on both. I actually like interacting with the screen of the iPad better on the Folio keyboard, because it's closer, can you see this? It's like the screen's closer to your hands, so as you're typing, you can just easily interact with the screen. There's not one of the negatives about like even the pencil, you never see me like, where's the pencil right now? It's somewhere over the, in the room next door because I rarely use it. And one of the problems with trying to use the iPad as a laptop is having to interact like up with the screen as much. And one of the things I do like, because it's so close to your fingers, like if I'm typing on Twitter and I need to go back to the home screen, since there is no home button on here, another negative on both. Um, since I, if I want to go back to the home screen, I got to flick up. It's much easier to do here because your hands are like resting on the screen almost. Whereas on the smart keyboard, your hands are like farther away. 
so you have to reach up farther to do it. And that may sound like a nitpick. If you do little things like this a lot, those little just like mo those little movements really add up to being a big pain in the butt. Now the big difference and one of my favorite things about the Magic Keyboard, and it's definitely a difference between these two keyboards, is the Folio keyboard does not have any like additional USB-C slots. It's just, this is all you get. But the Magic Keyboard actually has a USB-C slot. Can you see this? Now it does only work it does only work for charging, which I do not care about. It, the fact that it exists is, that might be worth the money for me personally, because if I'm trying to do stuff like import footage to do video editing, I then have to use like a dongle that does pass through power and SD card. And sometimes those pass through dongles get hot. So now I can just plug into power and have my external drive just plugged straight into the iPad. That's awesome, that's insane. For me, again, I can't, you gotta, as we're going through this, you gotta make the determinations on whether this is worth twice as much money to you. Uh, for me, it's absolutely worth that, right? I mean, the USB-C by itself sells me on the Magic Keyboard. Now let's talk about the build quality slash durability. Um, I do think both devices, both keyboards are built really well. I mean, there's a reason. This is like my fourth or fifth Folio keyboard. Like I've got the Folio keyboard for my iPad 10.2 that's the camera controller. I've had it for the older iPads I've got. Anytime I buy an iPad that's capable of having one of these, I always buy it because the, the construction is great. The key, it just, this seems like a very durable device. There's no way to get underneath the keys. So if you're like eating crumbly stuff like snacks, not that I eat snacks all the time, I eat snacks all the time. But nothing can get down into the keys. It's just, you always have it. It's super lightweight. It doesn't really add anything to the iPad weight-wise, but it adds a whole lot functionality-wise. The Magic Keyboard is, I mean, it's built very well. It's a very solidly constructed piece of equipment. We already talked about that I don't like the, the thing that it doesn't lay flat. But the keys, I mean, to get that extra functionality out of the keys, they did have to make them more like a regular keyboard. So you can get crumbs and stuff under this keyboard. And I don't know of a way that you could take this apart to like clean it, which is kind of frustrating, but the build quality is good. That USB-C port is insane and awesome. You can see it's got the smart connector right here. And I do think one of the things that I think people were concerned about is because of the, the way this floats, like the iPad is not necessarily resting against the keyboard. Uh, I think people were concerned that would it even hold on? And it holds on pretty well. Like, I don't think that this would just fall off at an inopportune moment. Like I think the magnets on here are pretty strong. At least they're strong enough for like a typing experience. Like. If you're using this on like your lap or something, this is not gonna go anywhere. <laughs> and one of the nice things about both, since we're talking about both of these, one of the nice things about using one of these keyboards, especially the Magic one over something like a more traditional laptop, is a more traditional laptop, like all of the functionality of the laptop, like the processor, the CPU, the GPU, everything is built into this right here, like the bottom. So if you're using this on your lap or something, this gets warm. What's nice about this is the iPad is what has the CPU, the GPU, like all of that stuff. So it never, the keyboard doesn't get warm. Like this never heats up. So you're not gonna have like an uncomfortable lap experience on either of these devices, which is really, really nice. And then the last thing that I wanna talk about, which is the last major difference between the two devices, and it's another pretty substantial one, is the trackpad. So the Folio keyboard does not have a trackpad. If you wanna interact with the screen, you either have to touch the screen, get a pencil, or use the mouse or connect a mouse to it. Where on here, you don't have to do that. You get most of the functionality of a mouse without needing to connect a mouse. You may be saying like, whoa, everyday dad, Gary, hey, laptops have had trackpads forever. Ever, since the laptop was invented, there has been a trackpad. Well, that's true, but not with iPads. So if I'm doing video editing or I'm doing something that had the potential previously to need a lot of screen interaction and then keyboard interaction, it was just kind of a pain. Yes, the 13.4 ability to use that mouse support much better made it way easier, but I really, the trackpad on here, the USB-C and the trackpad are my two favorite things, period. Because you can fully interact with the iPad screen without needing to touch it. And it just makes things, doing these qu quick edits on video, scrolling through things on the websites, photo editing, all of that stuff. I love this trackpad. It's super responsive. There are settings inside of the iPad that you can change the responsiveness, because if you saw yesterday's video, it, it's starting out, it's a little too responsive. You can also change it to be tap to select instead of click to select. And you can also set a secondary key by tapping with two fingers. So again, this was just another quick video to show you what I think are the differences between the Folio keyboard and the Magic keyboard. I personally, 
think that the Magic Keyboard is the better investment than the Folio Keyboard. However, that's for me, I have different potential needs than you might have. This is an expensive piece of gear, and if you combine this with an iPad, like this is an iPad 11, you could get one of these for like 800 bucks, 300 bucks, 1100 bucks. Now you're tapping on like MacBook Pro prices, so... Is it worth it? Uh, maybe for you. Um, I think this is gonna be the perfect companion to my iMac, which is basically how I use the iPad. If you like this video and you wanna see a little more accessories, I keep talking about this accessory video because I feel like all of these accessories, like this, we'll probably do like a follow-up accessory video where we talk about the Magic Keyboard. But if you'd like to see my initial thoughts and accessories for the iPad Pro, you can find that video by clicking right here. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.